Hey everybody, Norm from Tested here at Comic-Con 2019. And look who I ran into, it's Richard Taylor. Richard, how you doing? Oh, good Norm, it's fantastic to see you. Shame Adam isn't around this this year, but uh, a great substitute, let's say. <laughs> I had to make the trip. Substitute. No, 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 I, I had to represent. You guys yeah. traveled halfway around the world. I figured I could do the two hour flight yeah, to see you and the team. Well, you guys brought a lot of stuff this year. I want to start off with some of the movie stuff that you guys have yeah. worked on, uh, specifically the space suits. So you guys worked on Wandering Earth. Yeah, we had, here's a suit here. We had the great chance of working on Wandering Earth, incredible film, an incredible director and producer. And uh, we got to do the astronaut suits and uh, magnificent opportunity. With every suit and costume you do, it seems like you guys experiment with either a different fabrication technique or just going all out with the lighting. What are some of the features here that you guys are really proud of? Yeah. That's exactly the sorts of things, the lighting within the suit, there's exo suits on all of the astronaut suits, so that was challenging, uh, very, very uh, difficult to get an exo suit to work on a big character like this. Obviously trying to make them resilient and uh, trying to put up with the very long shooting hours for the actors. And, You're right. But the suits came out beautifully. We got to work with an amazing Chinese company as well, who did all the other incredible sci-fi props on the film. and. Mm. Uh, you know, they showed us up at times and uh, we were able to share things with them at times. So a great collaboration. That's the thing with in the movie business. It's not just one company, one vendor doing everything. You're working, it is a team effort and you want to have a consistency in the look and feel so when people see it on, on film. Exactly, the, the gentleman that actually ran, runs the Chinese company came and interned with us about eight or nine years ago oh and now he's grown this wonderful company and we're completely in line with each other's thinking so it actually we're doing another major project with them right now and it's imperative that those uh, the aesthetics line up between companies. And you put so much effort not only in the massive films but also some of the the smaller more intimate films like the mother robot you guys made just that one that luke wore and it's yeah. here again yeah. it's a one-of-a-kind suit yeah there's so much interest in in i am mother we brought it back for a second year people wanted to see it again last year we got to talk about the suit and did a panel and uh, to now see the beautiful film that's come of that but the fact that this director in 2019 would spend 97% of the movie focused on a, lead, a wonderful lead actress and a person in a suit. You know, it's it's incredible. So many comments we've had when we put our video out. People didn't realize after watching it on Netflix that it was a practical suit. And that's why it's great to have it here again because now the movie is out yeah. and people watching go, whoa, they made well, that. That was Isn't it amazing that people naturally default today to going, well, it must be CG. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, for, for 70, 80 years, there was no CG, and this is the only way you could do it. And uh, it's lovely to get a chance to actually do this sort of work more these days. There was a great fear that uh, CG was going to sweep away all practical effects, but you know, there are young directors around that are loving uh, re, re bringing this stuff back to the front of their work, and uh, this is a perfect example of that. You guys work in so many genres. You have science fiction, you have hard science fiction. You guys also work in fantasy and historical epic. First time you guys are showing something that Peter Lyon worked on for Mulan, the hero sword, is that right? Yeah, yeah that's right. We, we've just done all the armor and weaponry for Mulan and that was a beautiful opportunity. Uh, New Zealand director shot some, some of it in New Zealand and uh, obviously some in China. And, uh, getting a chance to work on the, a classic such as that. We have done Chinese uh, films before, but uh, Peter Lyons never really got a chance to do some exquisite uh, Chinese blades to this degree. So uh, I think uh, I think we reveled in that opportunity. Yes, flexing different muscles in his shop just yeah. to, to for that that aesthetic style. And you guys are doing also a lot of the ar the army weapons as yeah, well. Yeah, we've done all the uh, weapons for the armies and all of the suits of armor. Uh, obviously, uh, suits in this period of history in China are all laminate made out of small pieces of metal or leather. So huge amounts of lacing, but uh, we felt very, very fortunate that we'd be given the opportunity to do this beautiful film. So. 
In addition to the movie stuff, you guys obviously have a lot of collectibles, stuff for the fans they can get directly. Uh, one of the themes I saw for this year was all the new licenses, the worlds that you guys are playing in. So behind us, this mini Epics line that you guys launched a couple years ago, now you're in Alien, you're in Apex Legends. Tell me about some of these licenses. Well, you can see up along here how many uh, in, in two years. We've, we've just enjoying doing this so much. This is one member of our staff, uh, Moldo, has invented the style. And uh, we started off just doing it for Lord of the Rings and we enjoyed it so much and there was such a wonderful response to it that we figured why not just keep going. And so Wilf, head of uh, CP, is out uh, chasing other licenses that we love. You know, we've just done these crazy uh, Ghostbuster pieces and the likenesses are so beautiful and why wouldn't you want to just keep making them? So It really is a unique take on, on all these characters. Uh, but for stuff that's more lifelike, you also are working on some of the Lord of the Rings. You have Gandalf of here. We'll never, we'll never not be in, uh, obviously impassioned by our work on Lord of the Rings. And the lovely thing about staying as part of the... Uh, of this world with the collectibles for Lord of the Rings as we stay attached to that beautiful mythology and uh, keep engaging with our core fans of everything that we make and everything that Tolkien wrote. So it's, uh, it's actually perfect. And um, Some of the pieces get bigger and bigger. Last year you had the ends. Yeah, yeah, let's go. Let's go. Richard, this is gorgeous. Thank you very much. It's a piece that we've wanted to make for 20 years, never quite been brave enough, because as you can imagine, it's a very significant piece, but uh, it's the uh, seminal moment of Gandalf and Frodo meeting and uh, riding on the cart. So it's a, uh, a joyful piece for me to see at Comic-Con. And bring it here, you have the artist working on it. This is the prototype and, and shipping it over. It must be nerve wracking to bring a piece this big. And carried it with me and uh, Getting it through American customs, of course, is always tricky. And uh, but they, uh, you just say magical words like you know Gandalf from Lord of the Rings, and through you go. <laughs> so, uh, but it's come out very beautifully. We literally finished it the night before I flew out, and uh, making final revisions and putting all the fireworks in the back, so it's been great. Well, thank you for bringing all this stuff, and thank you for sharing the work of your artists. Like, I love that shelf that you have, that has personal projects, yes, of some of the hobbies, yeah, of course, the, the garage kits that you guys are putting out now. Yeah. It's wonderful. We're going to go check with Greg, because yeah. I know his big passion project is Magic Leap stuff, so we're going to check that out. Thank you. I'll let you go. All the best. Great to see you. So we're on the other side of the weather booth now, and of course, Greg Broadmore. Greg, good to see you. How are you doing? Good to see you again, Norm. Yeah. yeah I miss you at GDC. I was at another convention. I know Jeremy got to hang out and chat with you, but you guys are you guys have taken over almost half of the weather booth now with Dr. G, with yeah. Magic Lee. What are you guys showing off? Well, we're actually showing off Invaders, which is the game we released last year, but this is actually, for me, like a really, like a closing of the loop, because in the journey with Magic Leap, we had a number of starts where we thought we should show what we're doing at the Comic Con and you know, at the convention, even when we were dealing with very early technology. We had all these kind of dreams, we only really wanted to show stuff off. So we thought about that many, many times. We, in fact, some of these costumes we invented for a show that we were gonna, we were gonna bring one of the early light field displays here. So to actually finally be back and really actually showing people the game and showing fans of science fiction and fantasy, like that's really, really special. We've done a, a number of tech events and that's really cool to show people who are interested in the technology. But for me, the whole, this whole thing is about fantasy in the real world, right? And so now we get to give that back to the audience that, that actually connects with that. So and that's in, fun. And building out a booth, it really is decked out in the world of of yeah. Dr. G. You've got a, a, a massive gimbal here. You guys have a tiny collectible gimbal as well. Yes. Yeah, so that's one of the things we're showing off as a, uh, uh, for the show is the little beautiful little gimbal. Yeah. He is lovely. So he's our, uh, he's my favorite. So of course is a character in the game voiced by Reese Darby. Um, and people actually, well, the fun thing here is that people get to actually meet gimbal for real yeah. <laughs> and then come along and get this wonderful little mini epic and it's satisfying for me because the the mini epics have been a thing that has grown at Weta Workshop over recent years and it was Weta Workshop uh, jumping out into this other style of more caricature and more fun and less less of the realism so to have my character represented like that is that's a treat yeah, yeah, the really range nice. of the, the high-end ray guns that you guys put out almost a decade ago now yeah, and now yeah. to just the, the pop culture it's really f appropriate for comic-con it really it, yeah it now really is. The development of, of Dr. G's Invaders, you guys are, it's ongoing, uh, it was released it earlier last year, yeah. what's going on, you guys showed off the multiplayer yeah. at GDC, yes. you still working on that? So we are indeed, yeah, like that, 
I, I probably shouldn't give away too much, but we the demo we showed at our GDC was really like a proof of concept. It was us exploring what multiplayer is, but it was so powerful. Like we we all loved it, and it also actually solved a bunch of our development problems mm. because but previously when we were developing this game, we were all developing it on one headset. Now we develop everything multi-user, so that accelerates uh, game development, accelerates reviews, accelerates uh, playtesting. So uh, basically, we we just doubled down on multiplayer. So the game where uh, I won't give you the name yet, but it's not called Grod Battle anymore. But Grod Battle is one of the modes within the game, uh, and it is coming soon. Like we're racing along with it. The team back in New Zealand are, are cracking on. So I'm really excited when I get home. I can just see the latest versions of what they've made. What are the things that you and the team have learned now that the game is out in the wild and people who have Magic Leaps have have used it based on the feedback? What are you finding people love doing, and how's that changed what, how you guys think about development? Yeah. It's a good question. One of my favorite moments is this, it's actually that very first moment when people, people don't really, we've, we've all trained ourselves that uh, entertainment, that the virtual lives on a screen, right? And so we've programmed ourselves to sort of think certain ways. So when we first pe put people in the device and we say, and there's a button here, right? Yeah. And it's, we say, press the button and people will be like, like this. Right. And then we're like, no, no, like reach in and press the button and they'll be like, Boop. And that moment when they press the button physically, like a child would reach out and press something, that's, I, I love that, I love that moment, because that's when people, like sparks go off and they go like, oh, it's in space, the game is in the world around me. Mm -hmm. And then they realize they can move, they can interact, they can touch, they can push gimbal out of the way, you know. They also, like our Prime Minister, Jacinda Ardern, when she tried it, she wanted to go into the robot world. She asked <laughs> if she could go through, and I'm like, no, no, that's a wall there. <laughs> you, just want, you just want to stand there and peer, right? Yeah. You, like you have that parallax effect, you just want to want to stand there and watch events happen yeah. in a different world yeah. and the animation is just so lovely. I guess, yeah. put so much effort yeah. Yeah. into the stuff that's flying around there. Yes, yeah, so I'm excited with where we're going to, to take this. I mean, what we've designed obviously with the Magic League One is a device that's aimed at creators but also aimed for inside use in, in, your, in your workplace or in your home. Uh, what we, where we're definitely going to go collectively as a company is why to take this, this, uh, this medium so that it can work at a, at, a, at a city scale level, at a world scale level. So I'm excited about that future where we're, we're building what we call the Magic verse of course which is that that infrastructure that cross-platform infrastructure that will spatialize computing across the world uh, and and just all those experiences because for me like this is why Comic Con is so great right this is a, people who are living in their imagination and we get to do take that and bring it to life in a way that was never possible before because it's animated it's interactive and it's dynamic I, I, so I was yeah, so proud to have it here and connect with those fans that just they love it are you getting a chance as an artist to develop more of your own creators and creatures and, I, and yeah, so uh, I, I barely get to illustrate anymore, but on our new multiplayer game, I decided I would get involved with some of the characters. I love doing the characters. I, I used to do these portraits, actually. You see some of the portraits yeah. up on the wall? I did those for uh, Dr. Grubots when we were starting. People would write in a testimonial. So I love doing portraits, and so uh, yeah, I, I got to do a bunch of that on the new game. So, But then that'll be me, and then I'll be back to... Yeah, spreadsheets. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's great to see you here yeah. at ComCon, Greg. You know, we'll have to meet up at maybe a pop culture convention, maybe a tech conference. Yeah. Yeah, it's great to see you. Thank you, man. Cheers.